Good evening, everyone. My name is Cassandra Cadness, and I am the Community Engagement Associate for the Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts. Tonight, we are having an Art After Five virtual. Unfortunately, we're still in COVID times and we can't gather together as we normally would and be able to view the exhibition and talk about the artwork on the walls and have a signature cocktail and have an art making activity, all of that fun that we normally have during these events. However, we do have a great, um, we do have a great, we do have a great uh, lineup tonight for you. Sorry about that. We have a great lineup for you tonight. So tonight's discussion will be on Anderson Scott photographs, the exhibition that is currently on view in the Atrium and Blackman Galleries. This went up on February 13th, and it will come down on May 9th. But this exhibition is really amazing. And what I love about this exhibition is the fact that Anderson Scott has taken so many different everyday objects but yet made them into something that you really do kind of want to stare at for a little bit and want to look at a little bit more. Um, Anderson Scott, he was an artist that was based in um, Atlanta. He was a photographer. And although he lived in Atlanta for quite a while, he actually was born in Montgomery. So he has Montgomery ties. He graduated with an MFA in photography from Yale in 1987. Then he traveled extensively, um, shooting different things around the nation that kind of caught his eye. Um, one of his, his great accomplishments was his book called Whistling Dixie. And in that, it's a compilation of different Confederate reenactments that surveyed this culture that holds onto the past of the South. And so basically, it was a way for him to reconcile the past with the present. Um, that particular book and those images are not on view, but we have amazing works within this exhibition. So one of the works that we have is called Round Propane Tank. This is by um, Anderson Scott, and it was lent to us by Amy Miller. And what I love about this image is that there's so much to look at, right? So there's the car, there's the propane tank in the back, there's the stone in the front. It's like, what is it saying? You know, the industrialness of the propane tank and the ingenuity of the car, but yet juxtaposed against the nature of the rock. So there's so much going on in this particular piece. It's just amazing. Another one we have is called North Georgia Flea Market. And so this one depicts a piece of art on a couch. And what I love about it is that it reminds me of so many different things. It could be you literally going into that flea market and seeing somebody lay that down on the couch, right? Or it could remind you that you're at your, your own home and you've bought it at the flea market and you've walked it into your house and you've set it down or someone's moving. And so now they need to get all their artwork off the walls and they set it on their couch. There's so many different ways in which this can resonate with people, um, which I think is a, what a lot of his work really does. And lastly, we have uh, hot metal buckets and shovel. And the reason why I chose this piece is because it really talks to one of the initiatives that we have, our social media campaign, which I'll talk a little bit more about later on in the program, but our social media campaign is focused on the history in the present. And so this to me is really that 
kind of embodiment of that ideal, right? The historical nature of these big metal buckets that kind of look old and um, like they've been there a while, but then you know it's in the present because there's a shovel there and it looks like the shovel was just used and all of these things. And so you can see this and so, so, so much more at the MMFA when you come and visit um, his exhibition. But this particular program, Art After Five, is run in conjunction with our junior executive board. And so we brought this exhibition to our junior executive board and we said, you know, what do you think would make a really good program um, for our virtual audience? And one of the things that our junior executive board really thought would kind of strike um, or hit a chord with our young professionals is a tutorial on different ways in which to photograph. And so we are lucky enough that we actually have a professional photographer on our junior executive board who agreed to be able to shoot some tutorials. So I'm going to show you a video where she talks about a, um, a variety of things. So her name is Jennifer Dooley. She has her own photography company and she'll explain it in the video. But she's going to walk you through a set of parameters. So she's going to first talk about herself, introduce herself a little bit. Then she'll talk about why is photography important. Then she'll move on to how do you do a DIY headshot. Then she'll walk you through the editing process of a DIY headshot. Then she'll turn into um, how do you photograph interiors and then how do you edit those photographs of interiors. And the reason why we chose these two uh, tutorials is because we thought the DIY headshots would be really useful for young professionals. And then the tutorial on the interiors was kind of an inspired from Anderson Scott's um, work. So if you ever go to his website and you look up what he did, you will be able to see that he had a series of photographs that was called um, interiors. And so that's where he went and he photographed different interiors of buildings. And so that's kind of where we got the inspiration from. So. I'm going to switch gears here and I am going to show you this video. Hi, my name is Jennifer Dooley. I'm a photographer originally from Birmingham, Alabama, now living in Pike Road with my husband and my two dogs. I've been shooting primarily portraiture and wedding photography for the last 10 years. Um, my job has taken me all over the world and I've gotten to meet all types of interesting people. Um, I've shot commercial and editorial work in Nicaragua, Ireland, France, um, all over the Caribbean, New York and LA. Uh, I've also gotten to shoot the Sobe Food and Wine Festival in Miami where I got to um, shoot the launch of Chrissy Teigen's cookbook and got to meet and shoot uh, Chrissy Teigen and John. John Legend, and I've also shot a session for the artist Ashley Longshore out of New Orleans. Um, so this job's been a real blessing for me, and it's given me the opportunity to really nurture my love for photography. So today we're going to be shooting some DIY headshots uh, tutorials, as well as a tutorial on how to shoot in interior spaces in your home. And we're also going to be talking about the importance of photography in today's world. We'll touch on that first and then get to the tutor tutorials later. Um, so photography is so important because it just touches everyone. It connects you to your past. Um, it helps freeze your memories in time. And it also allows you to share your perspective with the world. Um, nowadays, everyone has an iPhone or a phone with a camera on it. So you're able to become an artist. Anyone can become an artist. And you can also be an activist or a photojournalist. Um, there's so many different types of photography, like photojournalism. There's uh, commercial photography, astrophotography, fashion photography. There's portraiture and wedding photography, which is what I do. And then there's also fine art photography, which is what fills the walls of this museum. Um, so photography is a pretty wide ranging medium and it's accessible to everyone. 
So a good practical use of photography for young professionals is getting a good headshot. It's really important to have a good updated headshot for your LinkedIn, your resume, and just in case anyone asks for one. Um, I know that I've had times in my career where I didn't have an updated headshot and I had to throw something together. I, even for this museum event, I didn't have an updated headshot and I actually shot and edited the whole headshot on my iPhone like we're doing today. Um, so that's really important for young professionals to have. Um, so say you don't have the funds right now to get a headshot session or you're not comfortable in quarantine being around a stranger right now quite yet. Um, that's why today we're gonna go over how to shoot your headshot at home with an iPhone. So the first thing we're gonna do is make sure we have good access to good natural light and a nice neutral backdrop. Um, we're really lucky in the museum today to have access to light coming towards us and from the side. So we have kind of a corner of light. Um, but if you don't have access to that, uh, any window or a nice glass door will do. Um, so once you have your natural light source, you need to find a nice backdrop. Um, I got this backdrop off Amazon for super cheap, and I use it all the time. Um, other great uses for it would be uh, if you're shooting your kids at home um, and you need a nice backdrop, it's uh, super cheap and easy uh, find for that. Or if you have your own business and you need to shoot product photography, um, it's great to use as a backdrop or to use on the floor for flat lays. Um, you know, everybody might not be interested in investing in a back backdrop. So what you really need is just a good neutral wall. White, black, gray, or exposed brick are all great options. Um, so the next thing we're going to talk about is posing. So we're going to bring in our awesome model, Liza, and have her come sit right here. And um, one thing that's important when you're posing is to make sure you have at least two feet of space between you and your backdrop. And that creates some depth in your photograph. And it also is like a hack kind of for like portrait mode on the iPhone. If you don't have portrait mode on your phone, um, it like creates the same type of effect. So now we're gonna go into posing. And the first pose we're gonna do is, Liza's gonna turn to an angle and cross her leg, put her hand on her knee and her other hand just like that. That's perfect. And we're gonna take a couple of photos. A couple of different angles. I'm shooting all of these photos on the 1X standard lens on the iPhone, which is the best lens for sh shooting movement or shooting in low light. You can also shoot portrait mode, but sometimes the lines, like the definition isn't always great on it. So I would recommend just the standard lens. And also I would recommend shooting at a high angle. Another good tip that I should have told you guys earlier is make sure that all your overhead lights are turned off because that's really unflattering light and you don't want that. It's no good. So the next pose we're gonna do is a standing pose. So we're gonna move this to the side just a little bit. And what Liza's gonna do is she's gonna turn her body all the way to the side. She's gonna then turn towards the front, put all of her weight on her back hip and roll her shoulder back. So that's a really nice pose. Um, and I shoot it from about here up. Uh, another good tip that's one of Liza's favorite tips is to put your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Uh, when you smile, it kind of elongates your neck and it's just really flattering. And another good tip also that works well with kids is if you start to get that frozen smile, like that Chrissy Teigen smile or like a shaky face, a good hack to fix that is to say the word yay or hi. It kind of loosens up your smile. So Liza, you want to say yay? Yay. Perfect. That's perfect. So now we're going to let Liza take a picture of herself. So in quarantine, you may not have a partner um, to help you with these. So you might need to take these photos by yourself. Today, we're going to be shooting these photos um, with a tripod 
and a remote that I also got super cheap off of Amazon. Um, other great uses for this is when we get to travel again, this would be a nice little prop to take with you. Um, you can take all types of cool and fun shots with it. And also it's great for filming social, for social media and filming stuff like TikToks. Um, so Liza is gonna do a couple of shots with the remote. And this is super easy. You just slide and ta-da, holds it up. So Liza's gonna take a couple of shots with her remote, and then we will crop these later and edit them later. And you might not be interested in um, investing in a tripod and remote, just like maybe you're not into getting a backdrop. So another good hack is to just get a stool and stack some books up and prop your phone on it. Um, and then you can set a timer on your phone. You can have your smartwatch uh, fire your shutter and you can also ask Siri to fire your shutter. Um, so those are some practical tips today. Uh, for shooting your own headshots. Stay tuned for how to edit these photos and also a tutorial immediately following that. So now we're gonna edit Liza's headshot. Uh, I have a bunch of different apps that I like to use for editing, but for this headshot, we're just gonna use Facetune and Visco. So first we're gonna go into Facetune. We already have Liza's headshot that I've been working on, but we're gonna open up um, one that we haven't worked on yet. And the first thing we're going to do is use the patch tool. And we're going to go over this corner where the backdrop is showing. And we're going to bring the little focus tool up and then find a spot that we want to clone. And we're just going to pull and make it bigger until we've gotten as much of um, that corner out as we can. So that looks good. And we're going to click on a little check mark in the upper right hand corner. And then we're going to click on the defocus tool and we're going to blur our background a little bit more. So you're just gonna use your finger to softly go around the edges. And we wanna get some of that backdrop holder in the back that's behind showing out, some of those flyaways out. So we're gonna blur all around. And then we're gonna click on the erase tool. And we're gonna go out and define our edges. So I'm going around her hair um, and her headband around her face and her shirt. And then I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this spot and go back with the blur tool and just blur around the headband. I check and see if we need to do that on any other spots. They look pretty good. Get some of those flyaways. And then we're going to define that edge of her hair again. Perfect. So the next thing we're going to do is do a little bit of smoothing. So the smooth tool is great just to smooth out lines and give you an even skin tone. Um, it's great for circles under the eyes. Um, but we want to keep some of Liza's pretty freckles, so we're not going to smooth all over the face. Um, just a little bit goes a long way. And then we're going to click the erase tool, and we're going to make sure that we have defined all of the major points of her face, her lips, her nose, her eyes, um, her eyebrows, so that there's not any blurred edges that don't need to be blurred. Um, and then we're going to click the check mark again. And then um, Liza does has pretty flawless skin. Um, but if you need a spot removal, the patch 
patch works great for that as well. So maybe there's a little spot you want removed. You just use it just like we did in the upper corner and just click, the, click on it and remove it. And the next thing we're gonna do is just a little bit of whitening on her teeth. She has beautiful teeth, but I just really wanted to show y'all this tool. You just barely touch, tap, and whiten. You don't need to do a lot of work. A little goes a long way. So we're, we've whitened her teeth. And then the last thing we're gonna do is the details. So I just like to pu pull out any little important details that I um, that just enhance the photograph. Um, I'm gonna do her earring, uh, her eyelashes, um, maybe a little glint in her eye and then her little dimple. And that's all I'm gonna do. And then we'll move on to the next step. So you're gonna click the blue arrow again, click the little square, press save to camera roll. And then the next thing we're gonna do is open the Visco app. We're gonna click on the picture we just edited in Facetune. Then we're gonna click edit. And then the second option down at the bottom and we're gonna do adjust first. So this is a, for cropping. So since we're not centered fully, I'm gonna crop this photo just a little bit. And then I'm gonna up the exposure just a tad, just a teeny tiny tad. Up the contrast, just a teeny tiny tad. And then we're gonna adjust the white balance. It's pretty great right now, but if you ever have problems where it's like a little bit too warm or a little bit too cool, you can adjust this top temperature setting in the white balance and it'll bring those down just a notch. And then skin tones, we're gonna go up just a little bit and then we're gonna do a little bit of fade. All right, that looks pretty good. I might add a touch more, touch more contrast. So there we go, that's our finished headshot. And then you're going to just click save and you're good to go. So today we're gonna to talk about taking photos in interior spaces in our homes. Um, I know in quarantine for the past year, we've been in our homes. Um, and there's tons of opportunities to use photography in your home, um, whether it be, um, I know we've been doing a lot of spring cleaning. Um, if you need to get rid of anything, you wanna sell it, you wanna take pictures of it. I know there's tons of people in our neighborhood um, moving. So you might need pictures of big spaces in your home, like your living room or your kitchen or your breakfast nook. Um, and then maybe you just wanna do a photo shoot with your kids or your partner or your pets. Um, so we're going to give you some practical tips today to help you do that. Um, the first thing you need to do when you're photographing anything in an interior space is to find your light. Um, the best type of light is natural light, which we have a lot up here. We have a corner of natural light. Um, you don't have to have a corner. It's ideal, but any window or glass door will do. Um, so also a big tip, turn off your overhead lights whenever you are photographing anything in your home. A lot of people don't know that, but that light is very unflattering. It's not pretty light. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot the whole room. And today we're gonna shoot my breakfast nook. Um, the best thing you can do in shooting a room is finding the widest lens on your phone. And on the iPhone, that is the 0.5X lens. Um, and it makes a wide angle. And it's pretty self-explanatory. The first thing you're going to do is do a high angle point and shoot. And then I'll tell you how to edit those later. The second thing we're going to photograph is an inanimate object. And we're going to photograph my orchid today. Um, the great thing about inanimate objects is they don't have opinions. They don't care if they look good or if they're not worried, if, you know, how they look in a photograph. So it's pretty easy to shoot them. Um, I'm going to shoot my orchid today on portrait mode. If you don't have portrait mode or, or an iPhone, the best thing to do is to make sure that your subject is at least two feet away from the background. 
Um, on some of the older iPhone models, you also would probably need to find a neutral background, but on the new ones, they can seem to do a pretty good job. So we're going to shoot the orchid. And then I'll show you how to edit that later as well. And then the third thing we're going to talk about today is shooting our loved ones, our friends and family, um, kids, pets. And today we have Chaco. You see she's been sitting here very patiently. She's kind of a big deal. She's a, she's a real model like Kate Moss. So she's, she's pretty ready to be um, photographed at all times. And your fan, friends and family might not be too into being photographed. So you might need some bribery, especially for the little ones. Um, I find that stickers and candy really do the job, but Chaco prefers a carrot. So we're going to shoot Chaco today on an iPhone. So weird saying shooting over and over and over. But I'm going to shoot her on the 1X lens. Sit, Chaco. Good girl. And the 1X lens is the middle lens on your iPhone. And it's just the standard lens on the iPhone. Um, and it does a really good job of like, if you're photographing children or animals, because it does better with movement. Um, and if you don't have any pets and you're just photographing your kids, I would recommend a neutral back, backdrop. Um, the couch is a great spot. And just let them be in, um, you know, you want like neutral clothing, not a lot of logos, um, but let them be comfortable barefoot, just um, in their natural setting. And uh, I always like to get kids to tell each other funny secrets because it causes just natural laughter. Um, and then you can just get photos of them interacting with each other. Um, I'm gonna later in the morning talk about editing, talk about white balance, but um, sometimes when you're photographing people inside, you can have like weird skin tones because of the white balance. Um, so if you're like intimidated by the whole editing process, I would rather just have an easy option instead of adjusting white balance or adjusting skin tones, tone those photos in black and white. They're timeless, they're beautiful, and it's a lot less work. Um, so that's all I have today on how to shoot an interior space, and y'all stay tuned to learn how to edit these photographs. Okay, so here's how I like to edit my photos on my phone. Um, I like to use a lot of different apps, but my favorites are Afterlight, um, which is great for like, you can add film effects like grain and light leaks, and um, it just makes it more a more interesting photograph. And then I also love Facetune, which is good for like spot treatment or whitening teeth, um, taking the people out of the background of photos. Um, it's a really useful tool. But my favorite is Visco. It's like my everyday go-to app. Um, so we'll open up this picture of Chaco and play around with it. So you click edit. And then the first thing I like to adjust is the exposure. I'm going to bring that up a notch. And then I like to adjust the contrast. And then on this photo, since Chaco um, has all that pretty light coming through the window, I'm going to add a little bit of highlights. And then the most important thing when you're shooting indoors, I think, is adjusting the white balance because sometimes things can look a little warm inside. So I like to bring my temperature down and it's really just, you know, eyeing it to where it looks good. And I pay attention to the whites of the photograph and try to get them at their most brilliant white. And then I like to add a little fade at the end, which is really just, you know, you'll play around and decide what you like and what you don't like. You can add a little grain. Um, this skin tone tool is great. Um, if you're photographing your partner or your kids, um, it can kind of work with the white balance to get some of that orange and yellow out of your photograph. So we're gonna click next and save. And then we'll move on to our picture of our orchid. We'll click edit. And then we're gonna do pretty much the same thing that we did a little bit. I'm gonna bring the exposure up a little bit more on this one and Add a little contrast. 
And as you can see, this one, even though it's shot in the same spot, is a lot warmer than the last photograph. So I'm going to bring my temperature down a lot. And then add a little bit of a fade. So I think that's pretty. It's a big difference. Um, so we'll move on to our last photograph. So here we have my little breakfast nook. And I shot this on that wide angle lens um, to get the, makes the room look bigger and to get uh, my light fixture and everything in frame. So we're gonna up the exposure, up the contrast. And then we're gonna really pull that down, that temperature down. And then sometimes you might want to go back and adjust something after you have your white balance fixed. So I'm going to bring my exposure down just a tad. And then add a little bit of my fade. And that is it. So that is how I edit my photos um, that I shoot in my home on my iPhone. So those were some really, really great tips from Jennifer. So I just want to say thank you so much to Hi, Jennifer. My name is Jennifer um, I'm a photographer. To give us those amazing tips on how to do your own headshot and how to do, um, you know, photographs of your interior space or your loved ones, your pets. I personally learned a lot from it. Um, and if you were not able to view it tonight, then you're in luck because we are going to put this on our YouTube channel, our Montgomery MFA YouTube channel. So you can find it there where Jennifer will be able to give you the tips at your own pace. Um, and maybe you can even follow along. That's what I plan on doing the next time I need to uh, edit one of my headshots that I need. So we hope that that was really helpful for you and that it was um, interesting. But we also wanna talk a little bit about how we're trying to promote this exhibition. And so we have this new initiative where we're doing a social media campaign for this particular um, exhibition. And so our junior executive board got together and they thought about a campaign called Yesterday Today. And basically um, what that is, is, is we're inviting you to find the history in the present, um, just as uh, Anderson Scott did. And, you know, he roamed all over America, recording ways in which the 20th century culture and society left their marks. And we can see that all around us in, in a variety of different ways. And as I mentioned before, the book Whistling Dixie really was an inspiration for our junior executive board when they were trying to come up with this social media campaign. Um, you can also see these, these types of themes of the past alive in the present with the exhibition that we have on display in our museum. But Jeb and the MMFA encourage you to take a look around your world, to find photographic inspiration, and to submit an original photo based on the theme of history in the modern world for a chance to win a $100 gift certificate from the museum store. Now we have some amazing things in our museum store and you know they're all from local and regional artists and it's a variety of different things. So, you know, we didn't want to necessarily pick out something for somebody to to quote unquote win but we wanted that person who wins to be able to pick something for themselves and so this is this is how you're going to do it you'll post your original photo on instagram just like you see here um, and you're going to use the has hashtag yesterday today mmfa and what you can win is not only 
that hundred dollar gift certificate to the uh, museum uh, store, but you can also win a mini photo session with Jennifer uh, Dooley, who gave us the tutorial. So we're really excited about this, this initiative and the social media campaign did already open. As you can see, there are some photographs in there, um, but it does not close until March 31st. So we are really, really encouraging you to go ahead and get your photo submitted to us with the hashtag yesterday today MMFA and help us to see the history in the modern world. How it will work is a team of people at the MMFA are gonna go through these photos and it'll be like kind of a juried selection where we go through and we pick a winner. And then the winner is going to be notified April 8th. Um, it'll be a live Facebook live announcement. So you'll have to tune back in April 8th to find out if you won. Um, but please go ahead and submit. We are really excited about the social media campaign and we really want you guys to participate. Um, if you wanna, find out more about this campaign or how to enter or any of that kind of information, you can go to the website um, mmfa.org slash yesterday dash today slash, which is right here on our screen. And again, this is going to be recorded and put on our YouTube channel. So if you didn't quite catch that or didn't get a chance to write it down, um, you can always review our video on our YouTube channel, or when you go on to our website at www.mmfa.org, you can type into the search bar yesterday today, and it will bring up the same information. And so we encourage you to really participate, participate in this social media campaign, and to really help us spread the love of photography and the love of Anderson Scott's work. Um, so that's it for tonight. Thank you all for joining in. And please, please join us for the next Art After Five, which is going to be June 3rd at 5.30 p.m. And again, it will be a Facebook Live event, just like this one. Um, it'll be a totally different theme. It'll have different things that we're doing, but it will be Facebook Live as we are still in uh, COVID times. But we do encourage you to do our social media campaign and we really hope to see those original photos reeling uh coming in and and we want to encourage people from all over to participate in this not just people in montgomery we want to see photos from all over so please please go ahead and submit your photos with the hashtag yesterday today mmfa and have a great night everyone <laughs>